You are listening to the Anxiety Podcast, where we support you to overcome anxiety and reduce stress. We will get vulnerable and it will be real. Here's your host, Tim J.P. Collins. Hello and welcome back to the Anxiety Podcast. Today we're talking about how we can support people better and how we can grow more on our own. I think it's a really interesting topic. I'm super excited to dig into it with you in a moment. Before I do so, I wanted to say massive big up and thank you to Kyla and Ollie, who are my two most recent patrons. If you want to become a patron, you can go to anxietypodcast.com, click on the membership tab, and then you can sponsor everything from a dollar to five dollars to ten dollars to whatever you want. Um, And if you do one hundred and fifty dollars, and then you get a coaching call with me every month as well. Crazy. Um, anyway, there's lots of different options there. But as soon as you subscribe at any level, you can then send me messages and I will answer them for you. If you do $5 a month, you can ask me a question. and I will make a podcast episode just for you and put it on the show as well. So lots of options, options there to get involved. Obviously, there's still a couple of spaces left. Well, not obviously. There is still a couple of spaces left um, for the retreat in April. I would love to you to talk to you about joining me for that. It's the 11th to the 14th of April. If you click on the retreat tab, you can fill in a form there and uh, answer some questions and you and I will hop on the phone and we can talk about it in more detail. Um, buy yourself a Christmas present, right? change your life, make your life better. That sounds like a good Christmas present. (laughs) Sounds like a good way to get started in 2019. Uh, If you also go to the free tab, um, you'll find the End Anxiety Toolkit there. So that's everything in terms of getting started on changing your life. No small mean feat. Okay, so here is uh, an email I got from somebody a while ago, and I was like, I still want to talk about that. So we're going to talk about it now. Here's the message. Um, I struggle to play big unless I have a crutch. And by crutch, I mean having someone with me or being able to call someone. I'm sure it's just a distraction technique, but I think I've been doing this for so long that it's become a habit. Notice that bit. Tim, come back to that bit. It's become a habit. Sorry, I'm going to carry on now. In fact, my last big panic attack happened when I knew I wouldn't be able to get a hold of my husband because he was diving. I think it means diving, not driving. Diving being under the water. Uh, And even though I was at home and perfectly safe, my mind kept telling me I couldn't get hold of him. And it just went completely downhill to the point where I eventually called an anxiety and depression helpline. Now I find myself scheduling everything around my husband's availability and when he doesn't uh, and while he doesn't mind being my safety net I would like to be able to walk around the block without a having my phone and b having to check if my husband has any meetings during the day I'm sure this applies to a variety of things I've spoken to a few people who've mentioned their own crutches so I just wondered if you could shed a little light on this topic Yes I can shed some light on this topic for you So a couple of things that stand out when I read that. Um, I just go back to that bit that I emphasized. You've been doing this for so long that it's become a habit. You've created a habit. Now, the good thing about habits is, like bad habits, like smoking cigarettes or drinking too much booze, you can change habits. Okay. So the first thing is, I just want you to be in this, where this question is to be open to change, to realize that you have the possibility to pick a different future or a different experience. Okay. You with me? Do you agree? Hopefully you're nodding along saying, okay, I can change habits. It's not permanent. It's not chronic. It's not, uh, you know, something that has to stay the same forever. Okay. So I've been doing it for so long that it's become a habit. Cool. We're going to start a new habit today. I'll tell you what that's going to be in a minute. Second point is, um, the bit where your husband said, uh, he doesn't mind being my safety net. That's also a problem. Not that, not that he w- would want to reject and say, I'm not being your safety net, but too much, just my experience with this. And obviously all of what I talk about is based on my experience and interaction of people. But, um, if you, if somebody's too willing and able to, fix things all the time, I'm exactly like this as well, then eventually they are facilitating being your crutch. They are facilitating you staying anxious. And of course they don't mean to do that. That's the furthest from the truth. But this is what happens when people are there for you all the time. It doesn't allow you to grow because you don't have to grow if somebody's going to do it for you. Right? It's like... If you live with somebody and you say, right, can you take the lid off the jar of pickles for me? Then, you know, big strong man steps over, 
crack cracks the lid off, don't even worry about it. But if you're at home on your own, you'd have to just figure it out and try harder or something, right? So that, I've seen this so many times where people think they're helping, but they're actually facilitating the elongation of the anxiety process. And if you can't do it on your own, it's related to confidence, right? You can't, and you can't build new confidence if you never have to be uncomfortable. You can't build new confidence if you never have to practice or strive to do a little more or get a little bit better or figure it out on your own. Belief in your, uh, in your ability to endure. That's what this is all about. So you've created a habit which has been facilitated because your wonderful husband has tried to help you like any wonderful husband would. He sees you in pain and he tries to solve the pain. We all do this for other people. If we see who's somebody who's hurting, we try to take it away for them. We try to take the pain away. We try to fix it. We try to be there. I've been through this myself. Like sometimes... You know, it's like when your kids call, you answer the phone immediately. How's it going? Is everything all right? And they're having an argument or the TV won't turn on or one of them's flushed something down the toilet. Whatever it is, you have to, you want to be there real quick. But then what happens is, is that every time they phone you, their expectation is that you'll, first of all, answer really quickly. Second of all, you will solve the problem for them. And thus the handcuffs appear. And before you know it, you've got people who are 100% reliant on you, which sometimes feels good. If if you're the center of the world, if you're the linchpin and everybody in your family needs you to do something, that can feel good as well. I get it. But it also means that you're not enabling, you're not empowering other people to do things for themselves. And this example is exactly the same. So there isn't really any way to say this, but you've got to break the habit. You've got to break the reliance you got to start with something small in this case because it's obviously going to be painful. This is going to be painful for you. Absolutely. So I know it comes from a good place from your husband's side because I totally resonate with that, but it's, it's holding you back. So start with the smallest thing. Start with five minutes. Start with the shortest walk. Leave your phone behind. Walk around the block once. Walk down the street once to the post box. Whatever the smallest first step to take is, you need to do that. The second thing is you need to also get your husband to listen to this episode. And, and this part is, is essentially for him, which is if, you know, in terms of supporting you, he has got, as you're growing in your confidence and taking a little bit of a step, he's got to allow that to happen. He's got to give you the space for you to grow. And so if if he if he continues to try and solve things immediately all the time and always be there and make sure that you have access to his calendar and he doesn't go diving or driving or whatever he's doing uh when you're alone and all the you know all of these special conditions and exceptions and routines and habits and stuff that you've built in to facilitate your anxiety he's got to stop doing all that stuff and again not in a hard and sharp and fast way and cut it off. But he's got to allow the space for you to grow. And that might mean, you know, don't answer the phone on the first ring. Um, It might mean, you know, give you a bit of time to figure it out kind of thing. You know what I'm talking about. Um, It's like some people, if you're in a meeting at work and the phone rings, they stand up, they pick up the phone, they walk out the room because it's their kids and the sky's falling and 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 other people like, I got to the stage where I just don't take my phone in anymore. Well, not anyone, not always, but sometimes I just put my phone on vibrate, throw it in my office and I go and do things. I go to meetings, go and do stuff because I can't always that, that the overhead of having to always be available and always be on and always be multitasking. And what if the phone rings? Like, it's just not a practical way to live. And we didn't used to have to live like this before cell phones became so pervasive. And now with text messaging and all the other ways that we can get hold of people, it's not good. So you got to start pushing yourself a little bit. Is it going to be uncomfortable? Absolutely. Your husband needs to give you a bit of space. Probably uncomfortable for him if he watches you and you're you're struggling a little bit. But, you know, again, it's like, you know, watching your child have swimming lessons. They, they're going to look like they're struggling a bit before they work it out. Um, so start from the ground zero and, and sort of build up and just think, right, I'm going to do one thing, which I know is a building block, but you can make it short duration of time wise because you need to reclaim your life and you need to build this stuff back up and you need to be an individual human who can function independently and do your stuff. Because when you can be like that, 
on your own, then you're also even stronger in a relationship. When you can be a, a functioning, fully functioning individual alone, then you make everybody else better around you. That's just, it's just the way it goes. I've seen it so many times. So have a listen to this. If you, if you know, you're the person who sent this message in, you have any follow up questions, feel free to send them through to me. For everybody else, hope you got some stuff out of this. this I think it's a good one to talk about. Uh, if you have enjoyed this podcast, please leave a review wherever you consume it. I hope you have a fantastic week. Look forward to speaking to you soon. And remember, until next time, less anxiety, more life. Thank you for listening to the Anxiety Podcast. For more information, go to theanxietypodcast.com.